All right, this is a stainless steel decoration that goes on a scarf, I guess, to hold a scarf together. I didn't really have any round stock and I didn't really have any uh, square stock, so I took a four inch square of stainless steel and I cut around two sides continuously and got a half inch for half the way around it, if that makes sense. And I'm just straightening it out and I'm gonna draw that out to about 3 sixteenths round. But trying to think of how to describe that. So you're looking at this uh, four inch square piece and you cut all the way across a half inch from the edge. You stop and you cut all the way down a half inch from the edge and then you have, you know, approximately eight inches of half inch wide by I believe it was quarter inch thick stainless steel piece my new anvil is a charm that horn is great I love that horn just have the horn I would to be honest I miss that big old steel block Especially for drawing out heavy stuff. Both, mostly because I'm afraid I'm going to break the edge of this anvil. Or hit it. Crack it or something. There was never a fear with that. Big old mild steel block. Because I did actually do that at one point, And it was easy enough to fix. But you're not going to do this with a hardened top. Uh, another thing I did when I got this is I did round the edges but I did it at a minimal radius. Very minimal because I want to see where where I'm comfortable pounding on this anvil before I put a, a favorite radius on it. On my other anvil, that big steel block, it was up front. And that's where I did all my drawing out, both directions, on both sides of the anvil. I don't know what size radius it was. I will put one on this. I just have to figure out where I want to do it. Now, the reason I took a half inch width halfway around this square was because I didn't want to have to cut it again if it wasn't enough. This design is, uh, I guess you would say, kind of a spiral. And rather than calculate how long it would be, I just took a guess. I also took enough material and drew it out far enough that that's that's well beyond the eight inches I started with. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, I've never done a video on putting it on the stand and tightening it down. I was going to, and I started to. I, I have some footage, but it's, it was so cold in there that day, and it was, it was also rainy, and it was just like a fog in there. So it didn't, you, you couldn't see much anyway, other than me trying to kill myself, trying to lift that thing. So, I'll just tell you, if you watch uh, Black Bear Forge, he shows how he quiets his anvil. 
that's essentially what I did. Only I didn't I didn't have any silicone at the time, so I just used three layers of EDPM rubber. It quieted it quite a bit, quite a bit. All right, we have probably what I think is the right length, or at least long enough that I won't have to recut any. So, round it up. Yeah, I was thinking of this, and uh, today I just got seven and a half feet of three sixteenths stainless just to have around. <laughs> that was a double cut. I was trying to cut out some of the repetition. Actually don't mind doing it this way. I've got I've got a lot of stainless, but it's not in real usable form like this. I didn't know if it'd be a pain, but it was actually kind of fun. Always is. Well, I love that horn. That horn also comes in handy today. Doing this, I'm um, not. Not physically today. This was last week. I'm just taking it nice and easy on those. It's, um, it loses its heat so quick. So I don't really like to pound on stainless when it's cold. I've had it split and crack. Not that piece, but some. Plan the shit when it when the color goes out. It's tough enough that it can take it pretty well. You can you can plan a shot to marks pretty well. You don't have to worry about putting new ones in. I always try to keep it straight before working it because it takes nothing to get it crooked. So you might as well start with it straight. At least it's easier to turn it with the tongs. I thought I would do some filing on it just to remove that uh, scale, which is pretty tough stuff. And then I realized later I'll be uh, using a wire cup brush on it, which makes pretty quick work of it. I'm not that familiar with stainless yet. Kind of got the feeling that this particular stuff I was working with was kind of soft. I mean, it's it's tough, but it seems like it's soft. Uh, 
All right, I sat down just to kind of, you know, figure out what kind of shape I wanted this to be in. And this darn thing just kept losing its heat so fast that I decided to put my uh, scrolling pliers to work on it. So, in a lot of these scenes, you're not actually going to see me do it. You'll see me like three quarters of me. Because I thought the camera could see what I was doing. Apparently not. Just trying to keep it clean. Uh, because I know it's going to be a pain to wire. Even... Even using a cup brush, it's going to be a pain to get in there. And you don't want to get that cup brush too tangled up. So the way I was doing that worked out pretty good. Um, that, pair, that pair of pliers at the end of the anvil is my short pair. And I have a long pair. And the short pair just happened to be about, a, about the right thickness so that I could put it right up against the previous. I could grip the round stock with the top of that plier touching the previous circle and it would give me a nice gauge so that I could keep all the circles the same uh, width from each other. I wasn't expecting that, but that was a bonus. Just figuring out some, trying out another way of pointing something. Something small like that, because it's, it's too easy to hit the surface of that anvil. And it actually worked. I, I'll have to go into that in another video. I felt like I could bend it <laughs> because it was kind of soft. I was kind of afraid it would break. So, and it just loses its heat way too fast. It's not a fancy design, but I really didn't know how it was supposed to work. I've seen a few videos. Gary Houston did a couple videos, and I thought that that's what this thing was, and it was, but at the same time, I've never used one. I've never had one, so I wasn't really sure. <laughs> What shape it should be.
I feel a little safer with that cup brush than uh, just your standard wire wheel. I feel like if you turn it and you just use the edge of it, it works really well without grabbing anything. wasn't even sure what I was going to coat this with or how it would, you know, if you're going to wear it on, on clothing, do you want it BLO on it? Do you want beeswax? Uh, or how about a clear coat? <laughs> I really, I'm not much on a shiny thing. I, I kind of like, I like a nice gray, but... Of course, as you can tell, you notice my tong there. I, I must not have shown that part of it, but it was a nice gray, and I took my angle grinder to it just now, just to see what it was like under there. All right, now for the pick. Yeah, I don't think that's supposed to be as sharp as it is. I'm going to have to um, dull it up a little bit. Maybe round the end up a little bit. It's pretty, it's pretty sharp. Considering it's, you know, inches from your heart. Charlie the Thief. She may look like she just wants some attention. But she's really scoping out the place. See if anything changed from the last hour she was in there. She got one of my pair of gloves I just bought. I mean, it didn't really hurt. She didn't get a chance to chew it up, but she did get it all slobbery wet. I'm not wearing them right now. Not sure what I'm doing there, I don't remember, but looks like I'm just trying to draw it out and keep keep the edges nice and flat. Nice square. I mean, if you're gonna round it up, it helps to square it up first. Just light, gentle hits. That's all it takes. You hit too hard, and well, at least in that on that stuff, and you could dent it. Yeah, I definitely have to, I have to get moving on the, the edges of that anvil. It was so nice and easy to do it on the other one. On this, there's still, I, even though I did round them, they're still too sharp. Put a little twist in it.
Now, I knew that there's no way that pick would slide in between that round stock. The pick was too thick and the round stock too flat. Thought if I, you know, push the inside few circles down. Yes, that's a word. And put a little dimple in in a couple places there. It would hold the pick nicely. And it does. Too nicely. Although one feature of twisting that pick was that you could twist it like a screw <laughs> and have it come back out. But I wasn't thinking about who's using this. To me, it was fine. To me, eh, heck, it went in and it came out. Mm, but I wasn't thinking of how it would be used or who would be using it. Look at that. Slides in. No problem. You fiddle a little with it, but hey. Boy, I've got a lot to learn about women's accessories. Yeah, that's it. Turn it over. Yeah, it's got to work better this side, right? <laughs> All right, so we're going to test it. Here's my... I still... This shows I did not even know what it was used for. The person that asked for this gave me... She had one that, you know, I think it was made out of, like, super thin aluminum. It was super fragile. I still didn't know really what it was used for. <laughs> yeah. So mom said that uh, this didn't fit right. It needed to be saddle shaped. Now, if you look at Gary Houston's video on his barrette, it's kind of the same idea. And this is where that horn came in handy. Because to get it saddle shaped, I needed to bend it evenly. I still think it needs a little more saddle to it, but we'll see.
Goes in and comes out. See? Look at that. All for a scarf. I say just sew it together. You won't have a problem. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, click the like button, and share this video for more.